So I'm recording this, and I'll be linking it to my YouTube channel, so if anybody wants to go back and listen to it, then you, you can do. It's just 10 minutes of a talk that I'm going to be presenting and getting ready for the, the Isborn. But I just wanted just to show you just 10 minutes to get your interest, really. I'd also like to thank Viv for inviting me along to uh, Nine Networking and for me to have this 10-minute slot. So my talk will be called, and this talk is called Forward to Basics. Why do I say the word forward to basics rather than back to basics? I think people have a negative association with going backwards. And sometimes in life we develop and get better, but like all of us, we have knocks. And sometimes we feel ourselves slipping backwards. And it's okay to go forward to basics. And I use these NLP techniques daily. And I've had people that have had all sorts of issues going on in their life. And when I have somebody come to me as a client, I usually set something which is called a well-formed outcome. But I also have these clients which they don't really know where they want to go in life. And they've had so many issues that they just kind of feel very stuck. So instead of spending ages and ages doing all complex language patterns with them to find out where they want to go, to really feel they're getting started, I go right to the very basic NLP techniques that you can pick up in Paul McKenna's books like Change Your Life in Seven Days. They're very, very effective. So if you were just to go out and do these two techniques I'm going to say to you, every single day just have that discipline. They don't take very long. Then by the end of the year, you'll notice a huge difference. Also as well, I remember, I think it was Cliff Thorburn, I remember seeing a documentary about snooker, and he was a professional snooker player, and he at one time had an incredibly bad final in the World Championships. I think he, he only won like six frames when the other person won like all 18. And instead of thinking, right, okay, I'm better than this, he went back to the process of what you do when you very first pick, pick up a cue, get some coaching, just how you're holding your posture, how you're striking the ball, and then by doing that, he was able to get back up to that form that he had before. So what are some of these techniques? Knowing that I've only got 10 minutes, I'm going to jump straight into them now. What I like to do, is this is called anchoring. This is association, and it comes from Pavlovian research. What I want you to do in a moment is just to squeeze your thumb and index finger together. We're going to use that. That's going to be the anchor. It comes from association like you might hear music. It might take you back to a time. Perfume may take you back to a date. Smell of bread may take you back to your childhood. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to use confidence for this situation, but you can use it for things like motivation, relaxation, and you can choose different fingers. So that one could be maybe your confidence finger if you need more motivation. The second middle finger will be your motivational finger. But if I can get everybody now just to think of a time, because this is what I'm going to do, of confidence. Because I think even if you're the most confident person, adding more confidence is always good. So can you think of a time when you felt confidence? You can keep your eyes open or close them and just really visualize that time of confidence. If you put yourself back there now and, and cause what is called associated. So you associate yourself into that time, so you're in your own body, looking at your own eyes, seeing what you saw, feeling what you felt, and hearing what you heard, feeling totally, totally confident. And as you think of those times of feeling totally confident, I want you to imagine just turn up the colors so the colors become richer, brighter, and bolder. The sounds that you're hearing become louder, clearer, and those good feelings are pumping round in your body. As you think of that time being associated, turn everything up to its maximum. Now I just want you to squeeze your thumb and an index finger together whilst thinking of that time of confidence. And now you can let go. Everybody, just close your eyes again this time. Again, see what you saw being associated looking at your own body, at your own eyes, feeling what you felt, seeing what you saw, hearing what you heard. Now turn up the sounds, make them clearer and sharper. Turn up the brightness, make the colors brighter and bolder, and keep pumping all those good feelings around your body. Now whilst thinking of that time, just squeeze your thumb and index finger together whilst thinking of those times of confidence. Very good, and you can let go. 
It's important that you do that whilst it's at its peak, rather than those times of confidence fade in. If I've got to do anything where I need to have extra confidence, I'll do it. So it's association. So if you're feeling a bit, hmm, I've got to do something now I'm a little bit nervous of, you can just squeeze your thumb and finger together and bring up that association of confidence. So what I'd just like you to do now, we've done it twice. I get people to do it when they come to me as a client about three to six times. But just squeeze your thumb and finger together now again, the one that you just did, and just let me know you get a little bit of those feelings, that association of confidence. Good, right. The other one that I get my clients to do is there's a presupposition in NLP, which is the mind and body affect each other. If you've got somebody who's feeling low self-esteem or not very confident in a situation, you, you can tend to tell by their body language, their heads drooped. So this is something that I make sure that clients do is that they really work on how they hold themselves. So I'd like everybody to stand up for this one, please. The wonderful sound of scraping chairs. And if you could start with your feet just nicely parted either side and let your hands rest by your side. And I'd like you to just tilt your head upright and keep your eyes open or closed. I want you to imagine that you have a thread running up through your spine. People often say it's a golden thread, but you can make it whatever color you like. Now this thread keeps you in that natural position of confidence and supports you in a very upright, relaxed manner. Now you can use the same situation as another one. We're going to use confidence again. So I'd like you to Remember a time when you felt totally, totally confident. See what you saw, feel what you felt, and hear what you heard. Again, turn up the sounds, make them clearer, sharper, louder. The image is brighter, bolder, more vivid. And keep turning up those good feelings with inside yourself. I'd like you to imagine that feeling of confidence where it feels the best within your body as a colour. I'd like you now to imagine that colour spreading out so it reaches up to the top of your head and down to the tips of your toes. You can double the brightness of this colour of confidence. Double it again. And whilst you're there, choose the same situation or another situation. Again, a time when you felt totally totally confident. See what you saw, feel what you felt, hear what you heard. Make the colours brighter as you remember this time of confidence. You're associated looking out your own eyes. Increase those good feelings within inside you. Make the sounds louder, sharper, clearer. The colours richer, brighter and bolder the good feelings pumping around inside of you, where you feel best in your body, imagine it as a colour. I want you to imagine that colour spreading up to the top of your head and down to the tips of your toes. You can double that brightness and double it again. And you can sit down. It's important that if you wish to increase your confidence, that you do that daily. And also as well, I had a very good interview, which is also on my YouTube channel with Dr. David Hamilton. And he said that to make himself feel more confident in any situation, he was very much aware of his body posture daily. So he would be aware of when he went into town, how his spine was, how he, bre how he was breathing, how he interacted and talked with other people. Final thing i like to finish off with is something that I've been reading to myself daily to really get it into my subconscious mind. And I think it's important if you wish to lead by example that you really make those changes with inside you first. This, you can find this story on the internet, it's very short. It's also inside the excellent book Chicken Soup for the Soul. And it goes something like this. And instead of just hearing the words, I'd like you to feel them as well. When I was young and free, my imagination had no limits. I dreamt of changing the world. 
As I grew older and wiser, I discovered the world would not change. So I shortened my sight somewhat and decided to change only my country. But it too seemed immovable. As I grew into my twilight years, in one last desperate attempt, I settled to change only my family, those closest to me. But alas, they would have none of it. And now as I lie on my deathbed, I suddenly realize if I'd only changed myself first, then by example, I would have changed my family. From their inspiration and encouragement, I would have then been able to better my country. And who knows, I may have even changed the world. Thank you.